Hello, welcome to Analog Output. This video is about a dual low frequency oscillator module I made. It's based around a design from the Casatronics blog. And let's take a look at this circuit here. This is sort of the core of the oscillator. It's built around two op amps. The one on the right is configured as a comparator, which means it's always putting out either plus or minus about 10 and a half volts. And if it's putting out 10 and a half volts, then that means you have current flowing from the op amp over to the left, and it's charging up the capacitor over on the left. And as that capacitor is charging up, since it's connected to the inverting input on the op amp on the left, the output of that op amp starts to decrease. It goes from zero to a negative value. And it goes more and more negative until it reaches some threshold, at which point it flips the comparator so that the comparator starts putting out minus 10 and a half volts. Well, now the current goes in the other direction. The capacitor then starts to discharge. And so the output of the op amp on the left starts to increase and it goes up and up, goes positive, reaches some threshold value on the positive side, and then it flips the comparator on the right, which starts to put out plus 10 and a half volts again, and the capacitor starts to discharge again, and then it flips again, and the capacitor charges again, and so forth and so on. So it's an oscillator. The oscillator puts out a square wave from the op amp on the right, and a triangle wave from the op amp on the left. The frequency of the oscillator depends on how fast the capacitor charges and discharges, the capacitor charges and discharges at a rate depending on the current that's flowing and the amount of current that flows is dependent on this potentiometer over here. So by changing the potentiometer, you change the charge and discharge rate of the capacitor, which means you change the frequency of the oscillator. And in this case, the charging and discharging path of the capacitor is the same. It goes through the same resistor. It charges and discharges at the same rate. But now suppose we've added this. This gives us two different paths, one for charging and one for discharging, with diodes making sure that one path goes only one way and one goes only the other way. So now, when the capacitor is charging, it's charging through this path, which goes through the top half of this potentiometer. And when the capacitor is discharging, it's going through the bottom half of that potentiometer. So if the wiper is centered on that potentiometer, the charging and discharging rates are the same. But if it's off-center, the charging and discharging rates are different. So for example, you might have a fast charging rate over a short period of time, followed by a slow charging rate over a longer period of time, and you get a narrow pulse output instead of a square output, and you get a skewed triangle wave instead of a symmetric triangle wave. So that means you can use the potentiometer to morph the shape of the output waveforms from a triangle skewed to the left, to symmetric, to skewed to the right, and from a narrow pulse wave to a square wave to a wide pulse wave. Now there's more to the circuit than that in the Casatronics design. There's a triangle to sine converter. The triangle wave goes into that and you get a sine wave output from that. So you have a, a third output shape, which is a symmetric sine wave when you have the shape potentiometer centered. If you have it off center, then you get I don't know what the proper term for it would be, but a sort of a skewed sine-like shape. So I decided to build a dual low-frequency oscillator module, so two oscillators based on this design behind the same front panel. I did make some changes, and the most significant change was I replaced the triangle to sine converter with a different design. The design I used is based on a differential transistor pair. So it's just two dirt cheap bipolar junction transistors available everywhere in through-hole packaging. The 
Cassitronics design was based around a JFET transistor, which costs more and is generally these days only available as a surface mount device. I just generally like the differential transistor design better, so I decided to use that. The resistor R1 here on the left was 100 ohms in the Cassitronics design. I found that with 100 ohms, when you have the shape potentiometer turned all the way one way or the other, you're demanding more current from the op amps than they're really designed to provide, and I found that that was causing some severe distortions to the triangle wave shape so I found that by increasing that to 300 ohms that fixed that problem. Another thing I changed was I added this 200 ohm resistor. Without that resistor the minimum frequency is well you're you're grounding the input to these op amps so the minimum frequency is zero. In other words the oscillator would just shut down if you turn that potentiometer all the way to the left. I preferred to have a non-zero minimum frequency, so I added that fixed resistor there. I added these resistors here, which are a voltage divider to make the pulse wave output amplitude be the same as the triangle and sine wave outputs. Uh, one other change was I changed the way the indicator LED is wired up more because I was uh, confused about the Casatronics design, I guess, than anything else. It wasn't really a necessary change, but I did it. Uh, and finally, the integrating capacitor, 200 nanofarads over here. In one of the two oscillators that I built, I changed that to 2.2 microfarads. So it's a 10 times larger capacitance, and that means it's a lower frequency range for that oscillator. So you've got two different oscillators with two different frequency ranges for a little more flexibility. Okay, looking at this module here, we have a display here showing our three waveforms from the first oscillator and one waveform from the second oscillator. I've got these turned down to their lowest frequencies and the scope is set at, at uh, 10 seconds per division. So you can see it's taking maybe roughly about 7 seconds for each cycle on the top oscillator and on the bottom oscillator it's taking more like a minute or so to complete a cycle. This is at the lowest frequency for each of these things. So yeah let's try turning up the frequency. I'll turn that one up too and adjust this to okay now so we're in the middle of the frequency range and let's see what the scope is saying it's saying about 27 Hertz for the top oscillator so you can see the triangle wave, you can see the square wave, you can see the sine wave. If I change the shape knob, we start skewing the triangle wave and making the pulse wave narrower. We get a skewed sine wave here. Turn this thing the other way. And the triangle skews the other way. We get a wide pulse width and the sign skewed the other way. Okay, turning this up all the way. It's now reading about 50 hertz on each of these. This potentiometer, uh, probably an audio potentiometer is a better choice than a linear one. Anyway, sitting in the middle of that range now, let's see, I'm going to put that into, no, let's, let's turn this all the way down and bring up an oscillator here.
And of course, we can also go slow. down any further we'll be here all day but you get the idea there you are the Cassatronics based dual low frequency oscillator module and I hope you liked it do I have more modules to tell you about I certainly do I have several I think you're gonna find them interesting so stay tuned subscribe and I'll see you next time on analog output